everyone. Welcome to another edition of Leading and Growing Your Real Estate Business. Coach James Shorty, aka Shorty. And welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode. And I'm excited today to have this amazing guest on the show from BFP Property Group, Ben Pohol. Since first buying his property at the age of 18, Ben has gone on to build a multi-million dollar property portfolio. A qualified chartered accountant, he draws on his long experience as a CFO and senior business advisor in Sydney and London. Keen to share his property buying expertise, he founded BFP Property Group, working alongside his wife, Samantha, to help others make the smartest possible decisions. Ben provides a warm and considerate approach to buying for his clients, leaving them not only with an excellent result in satisfying and memorable experience. Ben retains a professional membership with REBAA and PIPA and REI New South Wales and CAANZ. That's a bit of a mouthful, that one. Out of work hours, he enjoys spending quality time with Samantha and their two young daughters. Oh, it's great to have you on the show, Ben, and mate, really, really appreciate it. Welcome. Yeah, thanks, James. Cheers, mate. Thanks for having us on. Fantastic, mate. Uh, so in the old accountancy, accountancy days, what made you transition from, from that world to, to this world? Yeah, so I think with property, it was always been a, a passion of mine. I bought the first investment when I was 18, so it's kind of been around for you know, a while in the real estate space. Um, look, I, I think finance and accounting was, was a great start to the career, but I think like all you know, people, you become a bit stale. You you sort of reach the what I thought was 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 pretty much the top, and I thought there's not much else I can can do or what I really wanted to do. Um, work life balance was a pretty major uh, problem as well. Um, yeah. Um, so I think um, you know, decided to um jump ship and and start something, create something of my own. Yeah, I, but it's also a nice synergy because it's the it's so important when you, particularly when you're buying property, to understand the numbers and understanding, you know, everything around that. Because I, th I mean, you would see this as well. So often people don't know the numbers. They're just like, oh, that feels good, or or that that looks like mm. a good idea. What you you know has that helped you setting up the business and also helping with clients? Without a doubt, I'd say ninety percent of our clients are attracted to us because of that. I guess prior experience. Um, so with with myself here as a CA and my wife's actually background is in law, um, so we, we kind of have a, a pretty yeah, pretty pretty unique um, I guess skill set, um, yep. and, and we've been investors for a long time. So it has really helped us uh, attract certain type of clients in our business, um, um, which is it's just been great. Yeah, fantastic. And so, what have you noticed since the years of of building your own portfolio? What have you seen the trends um, within the industry, and, and how has that affected? the position that you guys are today on an industry. We'll go, we'll talk about market in a minute, but, but within the industry, what have you noticed the, the bigger, biggest trends and the changes? Look, I, I think without a doubt, the buyer's agency industry has, has grown tenfold over the last few years. Um, you know, we started five and a half years ago. And even back then there wasn't that many players in the, in the, in the industry. Uh, now there's, there's a lot of buyer's agents trying to make a mark for it, which I think is great. Um, but I, I think the concept of what we do moving forward is is going to 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 grow to to grow and grow and grow year on year. Um, but um, but look, yeah, I think there's a lot of choice now for consumers when wanting to to go down the path of of engaging a BA, whether it's the right fit for them. Um, so I think it's a pretty exciting niche of of real estate to be to be involved in. Yeah, and you see, like if you look at the the future trends, you see it actually getting more BAs into the area, or do you think you know? people who don't have the the background and the understanding of of the numbers and the legals and the compliance side of things do you think that do you think it might change what, what do you what do you see in the future within the industry I, I think it's still a very um, sort of exciting part of real estate where people mm. want to get involved in um, look I, I, it's not as easy as what perhaps people think <laughs> it may be it's it's a it's a slog like like selling Um um, buying a real estate isn't easy. Building a business isn't easy. Um, mm. But but there are so many opportunities. It's not a saturated market, which is great. So I think there is an opportunity for everyone to carve out a certain niche within the space um, to, to cater to certain different types of clients. But I, I think it will, you know, the demand for what we do will grow year on year. Um, and, and I think new entrants into the market will also continue to grow too, which, which is good. Yeah, it's great. Fantastic. And I think you hit a really good point around, 
yes, you know, one thing to to grow a business, but also two to to grow a, a BA business. There's there's multiple things that you need to to learn and and be aware of, which you guys are, are really nailing, which is fantastic. What are you noticing around on the the market changes recently? And obviously, with interest rate has you know rise over the, the last you know six to eight months and where do you where but prior to that what's been some of the trends that you guys have been noticing in in your dealings with clients and and obviously properties in the market so i think this year well probably start of say middle of last year to to this year now um the main issue has been borrowing capacity so people's borrowing mm-hmm. capacities have been completely smashed um um due to the the 13 odd rate rises um so look that's that's affected I think you know all parts of of the real estate industry being selling or, or buying, um, but having said that, the market has actually been extremely stable this year. So I'm here in in, in Sydney. The Sydney market is, you know, we're, we're we're staring down the barrel of about a ten percent return for the year, um, which is remarkable considering that there's been thirteen rate rises since um, was it March 2022 or something like that. Yeah. So um, it, it's been ridiculously resilient but i think the fundamentals of the market you know being ultra low supply um um, migration at an all-time high um has really sort of made the market perform the way that it has i i guess on that like that point around borrowing capacity is that a real education piece for for people out there of of you know Oh, back in you know, back in you know, a couple of years ago, I could borrow you know this amount, and now I can only borrow this amount. Is that what you're finding is a real re-education on on people mm. in the market at the moment? Yeah, big time. Um, you know, people's like I said, their capacity, what, what the the banks are lending, willing to lend, has significantly changed. So it's then well, yeah, educating them on well, okay, perhaps two years ago you could afford this, but today you need to you know look at something else, be it a slightly different location slightly different asset type um, 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 so and, and I think the major impact for us is probably our investor clients where you know we're working with a lot of clients that are quite aggressive in growing out their portfolio but the handbrakes have kind of been pulled significantly um, but there's always other ways to to manufacture equity but renovations or, or or doing other things to, to grow your equity position so we've spent a lot of time this year um, you know going through um, you know, different alternative strategies um, to, to grow your portfolio when the banks have stopped lending so you can't go buy new assets. But let's have a look at seeing what you can do with your existing properties. Yeah, I love that because there's always many ways that you can go about it. And and I think having an expert like yourself to really go, okay, well, that's that's not working. Let's, let's try this. And because you're going to still achieve a, a great outcome, that's awesome. Now, how do you... Like obviously you're busy, you know, like family, two two kids, running the business, helping clients. How do you effectively work on your time management? What are some of the things, the tools and strategies that you do so you can obviously fit everything in? Yeah, it's 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 a pretty chaotic day um, or week for us. Um, so we we work from home. I do spend a lot of time outside of the home office. Um, we've got two young daughters. We're both at school. So I, I think it's just being just planning a lot um, um, you know it's it's making sure that we, we we fully understand what's sort of you know happening in the next week um, to just you know be on top of it and plan everything um, obviously the business has a massive priority within our household um, um, so it, it's just being you know very conscious of your time not wasting your time um, it's something that I've learned and continue to learn uh, you know uh, every day um, but yeah it's just being you know having your calendar really um sort of you know documented and 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 allowing time for um you know um for for things and if it's not in the calendar it doesn't happen that's pretty much my mindset but um um yeah it's just being super super conscious of time yeah i love that that's awesome and so what about you like obviously we're coming to the end of 2023 how do you what do you do in relation to setting up 2024 do you set goals are you working to a bigger picture vision do you just Mm -hmm continuing on what's the what's the process or strategy that you guys do um for setting up the new year yeah so i'm in the process of doing so every year kind of you know november december we sit down and we do a strategic plan for the next year um it's just you know the old habits you can't get rid of old habits as a cfo for running big businesses that's what you did around this time of the year so you know i i still do that myself for our small little buyers agency um so we're, we're in the process of doing that um and it's all about well what do we want to achieve next year what are some of the projects that we can implement to improve 
their client experience or, or, or improve a whole bunch of different things that we want to achieve. Um, so it's just going through that process. Um, you know, so we'll we'll have it all. You know, by the time we we finish up for for Christmas, we'll have a, a pretty you know robust blueprint for next year of what we want to do, and then come January we'll we'll hit the ground running and um, and start ticking those things off. Love it. That's so cool. And what's what does the future hold? Like what's the, the next 12, 24 months look like for you guys? Are there some some big uh, hairy audacious goals on the horizon? Yeah, look, um, so we are we're, we're a boutique business and we we don't plan on changing that anytime soon. Um we're we're not here to, to grow for the sake of growing. Um we've got a really great client base um um at the moment that you know, we, we just want to nurture and, and deliver as much as possible for. We do take on new clients, of course, but we're, we're pretty selective with who we sort of take on as well. Um, um, yeah, we're, we're in a great position to be able to do that. But, um, but look, year on year, we do grow. Um, I think next year, it's probably more about, um, um, you know, getting into some more content creation, um, something that we've neglected for five years or just not really found the need. But I think we're now at the point where the business is, is quite mature where, you know, I want to spend a bit more time, um, yeah, sort of educating you know, the market. And I, I think I know a lot. Um, um, I, I think within our team, we're, we're quite knowledgeable. It's now just sharing a bit more of that bit through podcasts or, um, you know, through some video creation. And um, yeah, there's a couple of other ideas that I would like to do. My wife keeps saying you probably don't have the time to do it, but, um, but we'll see. <laughs> the art of negotiation. I love it. I love it. Um, so we've got a, a 60 second quiz that we go through all, with all our guests to find out a little bit more information about them personally. Are you ready to play? Yeah, let's go. All right, let's go. Uh, favorite movie. Yeah, not a huge movie watcher, but over the weekend we watched home and alone, home alone. Ah. It's a great series of the kids. So I'd say that's probably one of my favorites, even as a kid and now as an adult. Love it. Favorite food. It's got to be the barbecue. Great. Favorite holiday destination? Uh, Europe. So we've lived there for, for many years and I'd say we, we still love going back there. Lake Como is probably one of my favorite. I'd Beautiful. say, yeah. Beautiful. Do you have a morning routine? Um, I'm up by five um, and I must read the Australian Financial Review. Okay, cool. Do you have an evening routine? Uh, it's, it's really mixed. It could be Zoom calls. It could be, you know, we always try to have dinner with the kids um, every night. Um, could be hanging out with them, but there's always a bit of work involved as well. But it's a bit okay. mixed. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, do you have a most embarrassing moment? Yeah, I, don't, I can't think of anything up the top of my head. Okay, cool. No. If you That's all right. If you could choose five inspirational people to have dinner with, who would they be that could be dead or alive? I'd say Richard Branson, Gary V, Cristiano Ronaldo. I'm a huge uh, football buff. Um, yeah. Steve Jobs would be pretty knowledgeable. Um, and you'd have to have a funny man there too. So I'd say Michael McIntyre, the English comedian. I love it. What a what a funny, uh, what a fun, inspirational dinner that would be. Um, do you have a biggest regret? No, I've got no regrets at all. Love it. So good. And if you were prime minister for the day, what would uh, one thing that you would change? Uh, more incentives for property investors. That's the only way that will uh, fill the, uh, the the rental crisis gap. Yeah, so true, so true. And so do you have a best, a best piece of advice? Um, look, follow your heart, follow your passion. Um, um, if it doesn't feel right, don't do it. Yeah, so good, so good. And so how can the audience uh, find out more? Where can where can they go? Have you got socials? Have you got website? Share us the, those details. Yeah, it's probably the best place is the website, bfpproperty.com. All the links to the socials are there. Um, but yeah, BFP property.com is our website and you've got some great resources on there as well so go and check it out um and uh some lots of information on there fantastic ben really appreciate your 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 advice your understanding of the market understanding of the knowledge and everything in between mate uh, thank you once again for for being on the show yeah thanks james cheers